Hey guys, it's Anthony, and at the end of this video, I have some exciting news about my joining Georgetown Poker. Now here's some hands. I'm Anthony, I've been playing poker for a living since 2019. Hit that intro. Don't slow roll me if you get quad fours, man. You folded King King Jack Jack, you owe me $350. <laughs> Your money should be in there too. Did you bluff me? Would I, would I ever bluff? I'm leaving you. No, I don't tell. Thank you, sir. I would not lie to you, sir. I told you I had a full house. Doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Look who we have here. The best dealer in the room for the other players. I should probably go for a walk for 30 minutes. I'm under the gun, and I limp in holding Ace Jack 10 5 suited in clubs to my Ace. Four players call, and we're going five ways to a flop of Ace 9 8 with two diamonds. I flop top pair and the top end of an open-ended straight draw, but I don't have a single dime in my hand. Fortunately, it's checked around. The turn comes the six of clubs. One player bets $5. Yes, you heard that right, $5. I make the call, and we go four ways to the river. The river is the five of clubs. I've rivered top and bottom pair, but there are straights, sets, and higher two pairs to be concerned with. We all check it down. One player announces a better two pair, turning over ace nine four three rainbow. But the winner of the hand has nine seven six four for a straight to the nine. All right, they're about to pick Nez up, and she only got they only got sixty five dollars out of my stack. She only got sixty five dollars from us guys. She didn't get the whole stack. We survived. Two players call the hijack min raise is to ten, and in the cutoff I look down at ace king jack three suited in spades to my ace. We have a nut suit and significant connectivity for straights or nutful houses, although I always hate blocking my opponents from making the second nut flush by holding both the ace and king of the same suit. The button calls, the small blind folds, now the big blind raises the pot to 60. Both lumpers call, the original min raiser calls, I call, and we wind up going six ways to a flop. The flop is 1083 with two diamonds. The big blind shoves all in for his last 140. Two players call, I fold and let's watch the action. Right, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live vicariously through you guys here for the vlog. Good luck, Alan. I go, look what you started, man. This game was so calm and relaxed, and then you sat down and just mayhem, chaos. Another call over here. All right. Somebody's about to win the tournament. There we go. Five seven. Let's try to get the back door. Try to get the back door straight. I love it. Oh God! Here it comes. Oh no. What do we got here? Turns and eights. Straight. Got the nut diamonds. Diamonds over there. Wow. Shit. <laughs> I should put that queen out there. Get that jack knot. Alright, at least you went side pot. Yeah, mayhem. Pure mayhem here at the lodge. It's always good to win the first one, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's pretty. There we go. We got the winner right there. Guy just guy just sits down, just wins his first hand. Quintipples up. Warned us, man. He wasn't screwing around. Bing bing. All right, so he's gonna get the whole main pot. Touch it, man. Go ahead and touch it a little. Touch it right there. You don't want me to put the mush on it, man. Whee! Look at all those. Just listen to that sound. That glorious sound of chips. Look at that. He had, a, he had to go in for three scoops. You just got three scoops. Very nice. A maniac raises to 15, there's two callers, now a raise to 80, and in the small blind I look down at jack 10 7 6 with three clubs to my jack. I fold because I know what's coming with these degenerates who are all playing bingo preflop for stacks. Let's follow along. Re raise by Paul. Once again, I'll live vicariously through you guys. Good luck. It shows sixes. It shows six. 
Hang on, Jack 8. I had some of your outs, man. Like I had like a Jack 10 7 6 or something. I had one of your sixes. <laughs> I had the K6. There's no more sixes left, guys. That's fine. A Jack 10 7 6, I think, with clubs. Here it comes. 245 two, is the flop? Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. That would be that would be standard par for the course. All right, let's see, let's see which of these maniacs, these degenerates, will come out on top here. Shit, I don't even need to risk my money to produce a vlog. I can just like let you guys risk your money. Like, what am I? I've been doing this wrong the whole time. Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> I just just sit at the table with twenty bucks and fold <laughs> and produce content. <laughs> All right, good lay down me. Uh oh, got them kings. Let's get it. That's the nuts. That's the nuts. Let's get it. That's the nuts. They won't be. I just saw him looking. He starts shipping. <laughs> you know, I mean, he might, he might throws over two kings. He's got a bigger yeah, problem, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Teach me. All right. Good news, he didn't have two kings. <laughs> Good news, he didn't have two kings. Awesome. There we go, watching watching other people win money. Always sit here bleeding. But that's okay. Nice hand, champ. Under the gun plus one raises to 15. In early position, I looked down at ace, king, three deuce, double suited to both of my high cards and spades and diamonds. My side cards are shitty, but I do have high double suits and make the call. Three callers behind us, then both blinds call, and thank Booker Jesus, I actually get to see a flop without having to just flip for $1,000 this hand. Go into the flop seven-handed. Comes down ace-jack five with two spades. One player bets 85, and you know what? Fuck that guy. I've got top pair, top kicker, the nut flush draw, the backdoor nut fucking flush draw, and a gut shot wheel draw, plus a blocker if someone is trying to hit Broadway. Against these maniacs, I have an absolute monster, so I'm raising the full pot, making it 465. Just yeah, I potted it. Yes, because of you. Because of me. <laughs> I have no doubt. Huh? Thought you were thinking. The original better goes deep into the tank, but eventually lands on a fold, and I'll pick this pot up. Under the gun calls, one player raises to 15, there's four callers, a raise to 75, and now action's on me. In the small blind, I look down at ace-queen, queen-10 suited in diamonds to my ace. I just call, and now there's a re-raise to 350 by a player I know to be tight and solid. Another player is all in for 200, another player calls the 350, another player is all in for 280, and action's on me. I'm not thrilled to be playing a massively bloated pot out of position against the field, especially with a raise coming from a tighter player that could have me dominated, but multiple players are all in, and we're getting a fantastic price with a nut suit and coordinated high cards, so closing the action, I come along. The flop falls 5-deuce-deuce rainbow. I flop queens up, but I don't have any backdoor draws to make a flush. I check and the tight player bets 500 into the two of us that still have money to bet. I'm getting a pretty strong price to just stick it in given my stack size compared with the pot size. You ain't talking, you ain't whispering. No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Well, it's on him. He's all in, he's all in, it's on me. I'm the only one who has a decision. Yeah, I need that one. Oh, yeah, I need that one. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh. God, there's so much on the pot. I really feel like you've got kings. <laughs> you get to see them. Yeah. No, I know. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna see it either way. I'm just like, there's just so much money out there. Like, oh God. God damn it. So much money. Sorry, guys. I need a second. I mean, you bet with him. You bet with him to act too. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay down the queens. I'm gonna lay down the queens. I think it's a good lay down. Let me. Let's see. 
Tell me it was a good lay down. Okay. You, do <laughs> you win that, yeah. Tell me you got kings. Oh, he's got the deuce. Oh, he flopped it. Oh, shit. Oh, I hit the ace. I would have hit the ace. The ace is good? Alex. He's got a full house. You had kings though, right? Tell me you had kings. So Ultimately, I settle on a fold, and I later find out my tied opponent did have double suited kings, so I would have hit the ace on him, but in the moment, I made the right laydown. Three players have limped in, and in the cutoff, I look down at ace ace, king six, suited in clubs to my ace. I make the call, both blinds call, and we go six ways to a flop. I looked up Luxac in the dictionary. There was a picture of you, you little bitch. We flop the nuts, queen jack 10 rainbow. When it checks to me, I bet 30, the small blind and under the gun player both call. The turn is the king of diamonds, which could put us in a spot where we're being free rolled by someone with a redraw, but we do have the naked ace of diamonds and half the aces in the deck. When they check to me, I bet the pot of 120, only the under the gun player calls. The river's clean, the deuce of hearts. I only have 255 remaining in my stack and it's going in. My opponent does not make the call and will pick another pot up. The $10 straddles on. I am under the gun plus one and I make the call holding ace queen 10 six suited in diamonds to my ace. There's two callers behind and now a raise to 65. There's one caller of that, and now the button raises the pot, shoving for $265 all in, and there's a cold call. All right, I guess discretion is a better part of valor. I don't know. I'll live vicariously through you maniacs. And, and how, how much do you have? I have left. You have left? I lied. I got 500 <laughs> in a poker table. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was it was an honest lie. <laughs> he thought he had less. Now you want it all, don't you? You want every chip on the table. That's a yes. Okay, guys, who's going to get some drugs? Who? Guys, just make sure there are side pots, so everybody hold your cards until we determine all of the regular pots. All right, good lay down, me. So I need, well, this guy. Give me time. All right, so guys, there is a side. All right, so we have four jacks in for all of it. Nice hand, nice hand. No, he's not for all of He's in for all of yeah, it? No, he's no, not. No, 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 no. He's in for all of it, yeah. This and this, I'm not in for that. I had 265. Okay, so we need, we need. I don't have, I can't beat queens. Queen. I see queens. Yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm just waiting for him to either mock or table. I'm only on this Okay, so then I guess this is going to be. You can't beat jacks. I know, that's why I'm, I am Just making sure the side pots are right, that's all. Okay, so four jacks. This and this. Oh, you had diamonds too, holy crap. What? Everybody had diamonds. Yeah, it's queens, man. Right. Yeah, Queensland, yeah. yeah, and this is going here, and this is going here. Yeah, yeah. Nice hand, nice hand. There's a raise to 15 with two callers, and in the small blind, I look down at the very pretty double-suited kings, king-king, 10-8. I call, the big blind calls, and we go five ways to a flop. I work in mysterious ways, bitches! The flop is pretty badass, coming 9-7 deuce with two hearts, giving us an open-ended straight draw, an overpair, and the second nut flush draw. I check, and the original Razor bets the pot of 75. Oh, no, 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 my friend. Not on my watch, motherfucker. I raise the pot. What did you say? Pot, motherfucker. You get it through? Ball pot, Thank guys. you, sir. Thank you. Ball pot time. We're seven-handed playing a double board bomb pot. I'm under the gun holding ace king, three deuce, double suited in clubs and diamonds. The flops are 10, eight, seven with two clubs and jack, deuce, deuce, rainbow. It checks all the way around. The turns are the jack of spades and the five of hearts. It's checked to a player who bets the pot of 105. The button calls and 
With three of a kind on the bottom board and a jack out on both boards, I expect to not be facing a full house given the flop action. That means I expect the guy betting pot to have queen nine on the top board for the current nuts. However, I can hit a club or a queen now draw him, so I make the call as well, and a player behind comes along, so we wind up going four ways to the river. The rivers are the four of diamonds and the three of clubs. I wish the three of clubs had been on the top board to give me the nuts there. Instead, I've made the bottom full house on one board and nothing on the other board. And if you know anything about PLO, bottom full house or any under full really can get you in a ton of trouble. Still, given the action up to this point, my full house may be good for half. The better from the previous street bets the pot of 525, which tells me he does indeed have queen nine. There's one caller, I make the call. Yeah, hold on. 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 Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There's two callers and a raise to 25. Two additional players now call. In the big blind, I look down at King King, Queen 4, suited in spades to my queen. I call and two other players call, so we wind up going six ways to a flop of King 5 Deuce Rainbow. I dislike my play here, which is to bet the pot from the blinds with tons of players behind me. I have a four in my hand, so I block the straight draws, and there's no flush draws to protect from. In this spot, I really think I should be check calling or check raising rather than leading, as it's hard for any of my opponents to have much of a hand here. However, it is Texas, so I do pick up one caller. All right, just me and the winner. Go easy on me, Todd. I have I have three cats to feed. All right. Turn as a ten of spades. Pot. Four six. I'm not much of a cat. Pot of 465. He eventually lays it down, and again, I think I fucked this up on the turn. Yes, more draws materialize, as now there's a Broadway draw and a spade flush draw to worry about, but I have the queen high spades heads up, and I have blockers to pull straight draws. I really should be making smaller bets here rather than scaring off my customer. Hey guys, it's Anthony. Thank you for tuning in. So in this session, I wound up booking a loss of $189. And unfortunately, a lot of the times I was playing it like a spectator sport because these guys were just all playing bingo pre-flop. They're getting stacks in four, five, six ways. And, you know, a lot of people are like... Why wouldn't you want action like that? You know, big pots and lots of action. The thing is, is with Pot Limit Omaha, the equities are so close pre-flop that if you're getting your stack in pre-flop all the time, four, five, six ways, you're never going to have much of an equity edge. So it really comes down to, you know, who's the luckiest? Who, my cat's meowing at me. Hello, Callie. You want to come on screen? Come on. Come on. Come on screen. There we go. This is Callie, everybody. So <laughs> anyway... Um, yeah, you know, you're, you're never going to have a huge edge and it comes down to, you know, who gets the luckiest and who has the deepest pockets because these guys are trying to, you know, flip for a thousand dollars every hand. And I have it one Powerball, so I can't afford that. And, and that's not really the way I want to play. I want to play post-flop poker. I want to be able to maneuver post-flop and, and have some play left and have some money to bet on all the different streets rather than just you know, flipping a coin and hoping that, you know, I'm the one who gets lucky. So that's, that's a big issue that I have here with, uh, with a lot of the games in Texas is that they just, they play so much larger than the advertised stakes and, and they play so insane. And, 
And the rooms really don't do a lot to curtail it. They're like, this is what the players want. And the thing is that they don't realize they're scaring away tons of customers who would come play, sit in those rooms, pay time, but they don't because these games allow people to match the stack, unlimited restraddles to $320. And so, you know, the guy who has, you know, 600 bucks that he wants to play with or 800 bucks or whatever, you know, he shows up and this guy, you know, in, in the one, two, five game, he's sitting with 8,000. He's sitting with 12,000. This guy's got 30,000. Those guys, they, they know they have no chance, so they don't play. So you lose those customers. And, and so you're allowing these, these people you know, who are just crazy degenerates and, and, or who have just tons of money to kind of run over the games. And it's, it's bad for the poker economy. It's bad for your poker room because you're, you're losing, you know, tons of players and you're, you're favoring a minority of your players who just have really deep pockets who want to go nuts, you know? And it's like, if, if you want to play 8160, man, start an 8160 game. Like, I don't want to play 8160 with a thousand dollar stack in front of me. It's just, it's stupid. So anyway, rant over. All right. So now on to some exciting news. I've recently joined Georgetown Poker Club. I've been hired as their director of player growth and retention. And I recently, uh, a few months back, had started up a, a mixed game on Mondays that we've been playing regularly, a 1020 uh, dealer's choice fixed limit. And I'm looking to, you know, uh, bring some more traffic to the room. I have a lot of ideas on that front. And I'm going to approach it uh, a lot differently than some of the other rooms in the area. I've already had some success in reaching out to various, you know, groups and organizations that are interested in coming in and checking out the club and, uh, and playing with us. So I'm excited for the opportunity. Uh, in addition, uh, if you are a brand new member to Georgetown Poker Club, if you've never played there before, we want you to come down. We're going to give you a free one month VIP membership that's going to give you access to the club for a full month. You're also going to be able to play with no time charges every Monday for that month. And you're going to get five additional hours that you can use any time during that month. And uh, you can bank those as well. So if you don't use those, they can carry over to another month uh, as long as you're you know, continuing your membership. So come on down. And uh, in addition to that, you know, for our existing members at Georgetown, we haven't forgotten you. We also have referral bonuses. So if you're bringing in players... We're going to give you a free daily membership and a free time, or if you already have a membership, additional free time. So come on down, check us out. We'd love to see you. You know, after watching a video like this, sometimes I'll like it, sometimes I'll leave a comment, and sometimes I'll subscribe. Sometimes I'll even do all three.